Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How does little David defeat the giant Goliath? So our lessons came from uh, 1 Samuel 17. And also, there is a 151st Psalm. Does that sound strange to you? How many Psalms are there? 150. Well, in the Greek tradition, there was this other Psalm. Um, there are several, actually. And it is a summary, again, of David fighting Goliath, Goliath, right? And, and the same thing about the Philistine cursing by the gods, right? That's the big problem right there. And, 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 and David taking out the Philistine sword, Goliath's sword, cutting off his head and removing the shame from Israel but being anointed by Samuel earlier. Okay, so there are all these older traditions and writings from that time, from early, early, um, when the Bible was being first put together. So David and Goliath, David against Goliath, this is a metaphor, a symbol that we use all the time. Um, you know, survivor, it's a TV show from CBS, and there was one that was, they, they actually called it, David versus Goliath. And these people go on to this island, and they have to uh, survive on the island. You know, well, hey, I've come to this island. I'm surviving here nicely, except I keep bumping my head. I mean, on the, on the MRT this morning. I bumped my head on that rail that you people are hanging from. And doors sometimes, and, and even some ceilings. But you know what really slays me is these little kids will look at me. And I said to my wife, is it because I'm American? No, it's because you're so tall. <laughs> They're so wonderful. Those. Okay. So again, let's just highlight some of the things here. Goliath of Gath. All right. He has a helmet of bronze on his head, right? And he's got bronze armor on his legs. And all the other stuff. But those are the important things. And David, uh, he takes his staff because remember, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? He's a shepherd. He uses the rod and the staff to corral the uh, sheep and also to fight off lions and bears. He's a shepherd. And he takes five smooth stones. The old rabbis, you know what they did when they see this? Five smooth stones. What comes in five in the Bible? Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. <laughs> no, he doesn't take the Bible out of us. No, it's stones. But this is the way rabbis and early Christians and later Christians uh, reinterpret these stories. <sighs> you come with me with a sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of of the Lord of hosts, right? So that everyone will know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. Hmm, it's not quite so violent now. <clears throat> My wife likes to do Tai Chi. <laughs> and she did this uh, performance once. It's a plastic sword but she does it very nicely. This is the way a battle should be done, eh? <laughs> there we go. 
she should not die. <laughs> and then the Philistine arises and comes and moving towards David. And David gets his stone ready, gets it right, and he slings it and it strikes the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sank down into his forehead. We've got some Hebrew translation issues here. And he fell on his face to the ground. There's this new book out. I saw it in the airport a while ago. Um, flying, you know, you see the bookstores all the time. What's wrong with this picture? He's not falling on his face, is he? And where's his helmet? Uh, I need a volunteer. Would you be my volunteer, please? Come, come here. Okay, come right over here. All right. <clears throat> you are Goliath. I am David. Okay? So, and if I hit you here, bang, where are you going? Yeah. You know, when I hit my head on all of these things here, I'm always going this way. That's not what the Bible said, though, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Goliath. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> said, no helmet. We do this for Sunday school? Like, come on. Ancient Phoenician, which are similar to the Phoenicians, um, they had these helmets, and they, they come down. They cover the forehead. So how can David hit Goliath there? Back to that old book, you know, one of the covers had a slingshot like that. No, no, this is the kind of thing that bad boys used to try to kill birds with when he was, a, okay? No, that's not it. It's more like this, right? That thing can travel 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. And that stone is thrown. <laughs> no, no. At least he's got a helmet on, but how did he hit him up there? Right? Face down. Face down. <clears throat> okay. So it's all about this word forehead. It's the Hebrew word matzah. Matzah. I used to teach Hebrew, okay? Uh, Hebrew, matzah. Everyone say that. Matzah. Matzah. All right? Isn't that a wonderful word? It simply means something in front. And this word is used again in this story. Not only for where he gets hit, but also to describe what he's wearing, Goliath is wearing, the greaves, the shin guards. The armor is also the same word, matzah. The same root, grammatically, is used a little differently. Okay? So, what if David hits Goliath, not up here, but down here? Some scholars, this is not my invention, okay? I got scholarship behind this. Uh, that the stone would hit in the sort of the upper shin. Remember, Goliath is moving like this and opens up. And David hits him here and it drops down in and he can't open, he can't stretch his leg out again. You've had a stone in your shoe, right? And you're saying, well, you know, right? And he falls, and it makes him fall forward. Make sense? And some people disagree that this, you know, that couldn't happen, but 
if the stone, which is flying at 60 to 100 you know, miles per kilometers per hour, and embeds itself, you know, Goliath, with all the weight of his armor, he's a big guy, but that stuff is heavy. He's going to fall. He's awkward. Believe me, I know about being awkward at this height. Okay? This gives David time to rush over, get the sword, cut off his head. Hmm, interesting. So Sandy and I sometimes play basketball. Oh, we used to. And <clears throat> when she's going to score on me, she knows my knees are delicate, tender. She would sometimes grab my knee. I would go like this. She would do the Michael Jordan thing, <laughs> dribble around, and score. <laughs> uh. There is another old story. I mentioned that there are all these old traditions. And this is about you know, the great, 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 great grandfather of David, Judah, Judah, who is said to have killed the king of Hazor, this is before Israel is established as a country, by hitting him where? In the greaves after he's been knocking off some other warriors, throwing stones at them. And knocking, okay. And, and the tradition, this is obviously, this earlier story is based on the or even earlier story of David, okay. Especially when Judah's father, Jacob, says, who also presumably slayed a giant, says that Judah would become a king. Well, Judah never becomes a king, but his great-great-great-great-grandson, David, does become the king. Right? So what are the lessons? When we're reading our Bibles, we have to read closer and closer. Yeah, it helps to know a little Hebrew and Greek, okay? But you can, you can ask somebody. Little stones and tiny seeds, little stones. I mean, I've had kidney stones. That knocks me down. Tiny seeds, like the mustard seed, that can then grow into the big, into the church, where all can gather, like the birds. <laughs> right? Look for unexpected smaller miracles. We don't have to knock giants over by hitting them in the head with some big nuclear bomb or something. <sighs> Small ways. In the Bible stories, we read them closer to see how God very subtly works sometimes in, in our life. Or how we can get tripped up when we think of ourselves being too big, too, too Goliath, right? <clears throat> you know, like that, right? But the Bible stories will remind us, that's why we do confession, that God is God. And we're just God's little servants. <laughs> so how do we go about defeating our Goliath? Because we all have them, right? Ask yourself, what are my big problems or things I think are so big? Maybe they're not so big. Is it politics? <laughs> Is it money? Is it health? Is it relationship? Maybe there are, there's a little way a little stone, a little tiny seed that you can use, that God gives you. And here's the joke. The word for knee in Hebrew is barach, barachayim, two knees. Okay? And 
What David does is he forces Goliath to get down on his knees to, and it's the same word for receiving a blessing when you kneel, where you become blessed, Baruch. Come, the word for blessing comes from the word for knees, because you kneel to, okay? So the joke is, Goliath is forced to be blessed. He becomes a blessing even though he was threatening. But this is weird. What does David do with Goliath's head? It says in the story he takes it to Jerusalem, but David doesn't conquer Jerusalem for several years from now. Is he running around with his head in his tent along with the armor? For a, a year? Hmm. In Mark, also Matthew, Luke, and John, they take Jesus, the Romans do, to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. Goliath, Gol means head, of Goth. The Gulgoleth of Gala, Goliath of Gath, all right? Is this just some sort of coincidence? Is this a, a bad word play? <laughs> or is this good theology? Who that? Whose head is that? Now, tradition says it's Adam's head, by the way. We'll make it Goliath, even though it's a little small. <laughs> right? Because, you know, and, and, and it's in many pictures that there'll be a skull in these reproductions from the Renaissance. This little son of David, Jesus, defeats the biggest evil ever at Golgotha, where the great Roman Empire and the whole wide world would least expect it. Do we know, really, this whole story and live it? So how have we used the story of God's littlest unexpected grace, little stuff, to help overthrow and overcome our giant problems. Psalm 118, the, psalm, the, the, the stone which the builders reject becomes the cornerstone, the head of the corner, the cornerstone. So we sort of have to be, like David, a little clever in how we go about things. You know, I've been at McKay Hospitals <laughs> a few times well, since I've been here, not for the kidney stones, but for other things. And I notice that it's sitting there, every once in a while, they'll, on their TV monitors, they'll be playing from good TV and very subtle. And I'm thinking of all of the people there, many of whom are probably not Christian, but they're getting the message quietly. Hmm. Sticks and stones may break my bones and names. Um, bricks. The folk singer Pete Seeger and his Asian wife Toshi, back in 1949, the year I was born, by the way, uh, he was doing a concert upstate New York. And Pete Seeger, very um, socially active, let us say, the Ku Klux Klan which is big in upstate New York, and the John Birch Society came to protest, and they threw bricks at him and his wife. And one just missed her, Toshi's head in the car. And Pete looked at it and said to her, this would be good for us to use to rebuild our chimney back at the house. And he got out of the car and started collecting bricks, gave them to Toshi. She collected them in the back seat, and they took them home, and they put these bricks that were intended to hurt to good use. 
turn the other cheek. I need another volunteer. You know the story about when Jesus says, if someone strikes you on the, and he says specifically, the right cheek. Correct? Okay. Which one is your right cheek? I'm right-handed. How am I going to hit you there? Like this. This is how superiors treat inferiors. Sorry. Right? How fathers discipline their sons. <laughs> Soldiers treat peasants, Jewish peasants. Etc. Etc. But then Jesus says, "Turn the other cheek." Now, how do I hit you? Ah, but Rome had laws about this. You could not do this. Roman soldiers were not allowed to strike the peasants like this. Jewish law said, "You can't." Do brutalize, you know, your spouse or your children or your neighbor. Jesus is being very clever here. He's, he's daring you. It's almost like a political protest. Yeah. And then he says, and if you, me, the Roman soldier, says, you know, uh, if I make you carry my, my pack for one stadia, one mile, go the second mile. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Rome did not allow the abuse of peasants that way. So you were saying, go ahead, make me do that. No. Again, it's a subtle way of being pro. We have to read the Bible closer and closer. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's finish this up. Let's finish this up. Halloween is coming. And just think, a little tweet can scare away those scary monsters and their tricks, right? Also on Hallow's Eve, Halloween, Martin Luther, years ago, when he nailed his 95 theses to challenge the Roman Catholic Church at the time. He l later wrote a hymn that we all know, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, with the lines, And though the world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed this truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. Here it comes. One little word shall fell him. That word above all earthly powers. No thanks to us, Abida. Right? It's Jesus. And Paul talks about himself in his ministry, facing all sorts of afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, oh, 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 right? And then he says, but by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, power of God. These are the weapons of righteousness, not the swords, not the guns, not the bombs. There is this other old hymn, one of my favorites. Anyone know this hymn? He, he who would valiant be against all disaster. Uh, written by John Bunyan. The words were taken from John Bunyan, Pilgrim's Progress, a long time ago. Um, um, just against all disaster. This is the line I want. No foes shall stay our might, though we with giants fight. We will make good our right to be a pilgrim. 
as we pilgrimage to places like Taiwan or wherever we go. <laughs> Since, Lord, thou dost defend us with thy spirit, we know we at the end shall life inherit. Then fancies flee away. I'll, I'll fear not what other people say. I'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim. So, if you would join me again to close this with words from Psalm 35, which sounded very violent at first. A little shorter verse. Okay? You do the highlight. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Together, fight against the evil that fights against me. O Lord, say to my soul, I am your salvation. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, exulting in this deliverance. All my bones shall say, O Lord, who is like you? You deliver the weak from those too strong for them. You weak and needy from those who despoil them. Let those who desire vindication shout for joy and be glad and say always, Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of this humble servant. May our tongues tell of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Amen. Amen.